Hi, everyone. It's time for Daybreak in 10 on Color 10. You know that means we'll be on the air commercial free for the next 10 minutes to take you through the end of Daybreak. Let's get started with meteorologist Elisa Rafa and the last day of winter. Yeah, it is the last day of winter. We officially start spring tomorrow. Uh, we've got some clouds out there this morning. It's 43 degrees with south and southeast winds at 10 miles per hour. We could have a couple of sprinkles around Springfield this morning and maybe up in central Missouri as well. We're getting clipped by a developing low that will come uh, through the Ozarks pretty much the overnight tonight into tomorrow. Uh, we're looking at a temperature of 43 degrees right now. It's 41 in Monette and 33 in Rolla. By dismissal, increasing clouds will be mostly cloudy with a temperature at 60 degrees. Still seasonal. Not much happens today. We'll just hold on to some increasing clouds. By about midnight tonight, we'll start to see these showers approach from the north and west. Spotty showers by tomorrow morning as that front comes through. And we'll have some spotty showers through the first half of the day tomorrow with some clearing already by the evening hours. Because the system is quick and it's weak and it doesn't have a lot of moisture, we're looking at light rain totals at about a tenth to a quarter of an inch, if not less than that. Uh, again, as Lauren mentioned, it is the first day of spring tomorrow. It comes in at 5.54 p.m. And that's when we start to see uh, the northern hemisphere of the Earth, which is our neck of the woods, start to tilt towards the sun a little bit more. And that's that's what's going to officially start spring and then charge us towards summer. So by tomorrow, we should have pretty equal hours of daylight and nighttime, and then days get longer as we uh, head towards summer. Starting on Thursday, we'll start, start to have those days get a little bit longer there. Joe, Lauren. All right, Elisa, thanks. We have some breaking news now. An escaped inmate from Pettis County who has been on the run since March 10th is back behind bars. Travis Davis was arrested earlier this morning after authorities searched overnight in Cooper County. After escaping from jail earlier this month, Davis was arrested in Oklahoma but was able to steal a police car and escape once again. Authorities then found a stolen vehicle from Oklahoma in Pettis County Sunday night and believe Davis was back in the area. Davis has been returned to the Pettis County Jail. Continuing to put crime into focus, a Springfield man is headed to prison for 10 years after he was sentenced for child sexual exploitation. Police say 55-year-old Daniel Rowland enticed a person that he believed was a 14-year-old girl. However, the Craigslist ad was actually an undercover Greene County Sheriff's detective. After an exchange of several emails and videos, he arranged a meeting for sex, but Rowland quickly found out there was no young girl and he was arrested there at the scene. The Greene County Sheriff's Department has arrested two people in connection to two stolen U-Haul trucks. Last night, a man and woman were arrested for having drug paraphernalia. During the stops, the U-Hauls were recovered. Both suspects were taken into custody and booked into jail. In some more local news, unemployment is a little bit higher in Dallas County than other parts of the Ozarks. People there are looking for better jobs. Officials with the Missouri Job Center are headed to Dallas County to help today. More than two dozen employers will be at Buffalo High School between 10 and 2. Companies from Buffalo as well as Springfield will be ready to talk to you. Be sure to dress up and bring a copy of your resume. Watch out for MoDOT next month as about 300 patching crews will be working to repair potholes throughout the state. Until the roads warm up, this will be just a temporary fix. Over 400,000 potholes have already been patched so far this year, which is equal to two-thirds of all that were fixed last year. If you still see one in your neighborhood, you can report it on MoDOT's website or call 1-888-ASK-MoDOT. Convoy of Hope is responding to multiple disasters, one not too far from here, the other, though, thousands of miles away. The disaster services team heads to Nebraska over the weekend to deliver two truckloads of bottled water to communities there that have been devastated by floodwaters. Two more trucks also headed up north yesterday to deliver even more water, and Convoy of Hope's international disaster team was deployed to Africa, where a cyclone recently hit. The team will provide food, water filtration systems, and solar lanterns to those impacted by the storm. You may have noticed an unusual cloud of smoke in the area yesterday, but you shouldn't worry about that. It's Wilson's Creek National Battlefield, which started a controlled burn and should last through today. The park staff burned about 250 acres of grassland to help reduce fire risk and preserve native species living and growing in the park. Moving around the region now in Arkansas, the state's new minimum wage increase has become a big topic, even though some are against it. Our Hannah Zettel joins us now to explain why some say raising the minimum wage across the board could have unintended consequences. 
That's right, Lauren and Joe. Arkansas lawmakers are considering a handful of changes to the state's new minimum wage increase, despite growing opposition. In recent months, Arkansas senators have fought to change the state's minimum wage. Some lawmakers want to exclude certain groups from the increase, like minors, convicted felons, employers, and nonprofits with less than 25 employees. Now, in the last few days, Governor Hutchinson and both state Republican and Democratic parties have come out against changing minimum wage amendment that voters passed last November. But those pushing for changes say it's important and that raising the minimum wage for every employer could create unforeseen issues. I don't want to shut down our boys and girls clubs. I don't want to keep teenagers from being able to get some good training and get a job. That's the last thing we want. I don't want to hurt those kids and be able to move forward because minimum wage was never meant to be a living wage. Minimum wage was a starting salary for you to get some experience and get some expertise and move up on the ladder. And even though we may not intend minimum wage to be a, a way that somebody makes their living for the rest of their life, sadly and unfortunately the facts are that a lot of Arkansans are working minimum wage jobs and that's how they're going to they're probably going to stay in those minimum wage jobs um, due to a lot many circumstances. Voters are voting in favor of increased minimum wage in several states across the country. Wages in Arkansas will rise to $11 per hour by the year 2021. Moving on to some political news now, an important note for Greene County voters. If you need to request an absentee ballot for the April 2nd election, that request has to be in by tomorrow. Those are due at the county clerk's office by 5, and the actual ballots are due at the office by 7 on Election Day. Greene County also offers in-person absentee voting on March 30th and April 1st. A handful of notable Republicans will be gathering in Springfield this weekend to celebrate Lincoln Day. Missouri's top leaders, including Governor Mike Parson, Senators Josh Hawley, and Roy Blunt, will, plus Congressman Billy Long, will all be attending. Registration begins at 8 in the morning Saturday at the Oasis Convention Center. There will be a panel discussion and presentation, and to learn how to sign up, visit our website, OzarksFirst.com. And a local spotlight for you. The start of spring, as we've heard us say, is almost here. So look at this modern piece of art. You've seen this thing downtown. It gets a twist, and this happening in about 30 minutes from now. Springfield Public Works will rotate the tumbler. This has been there since 1971. It's intended to actually be tumbled every season to create a new piece of art. How do you like that? I like that a lot. Also today, the Department of Mental Health will host a Tech Fest event from 10 a.m. to 3 at the Library Center's Auditorium. Missouri has become a tech Technology first state, and that initiative encourages the understanding and use of technology to improve the quality of lives for people who need some more service. The event will include a public demonstration and testimonials from people with developmental disabilities. Very nice. And then what do we have happening around the world right now? Um, get moving? Yeah, one of our top trends is a cyclone that hit Africa last week and they're really starting to see the devastation and the death toll now this week as they begin to clean up. Uh, the president of Mozambique, which was one of the countries in South Africa affected, has said that he thinks the death toll could rise to as high as a thousand. Mm. Wow. So that's um, super sad. And you, you heard us say the convoy of hope is heading there. Yeah, I was just going to say you just had that story that uh, mm -hmm. folks from here are sending the help out. Yeah. Right? Um, the other trend, actually number two today, is that it is St. Joseph's Day. Which Woo. is your name day. So yeah, happy name day to you. Name happy day. St. Joseph. Of course. <laughs> Frank and Kathy Morano, very proud today. Oh, I'll be yeah. talking to them, of course. Right? Yeah. We're just missing out on some of our pastries. But. <laughs> That's true. We'll I got to feast somehow, right? Yeah. I'll, yeah. Take, I'll take warmer weather and almost the start of spring, though. Yeah. Uh, 60 degrees today uh, by dismissal. We're going to increase those clouds. Showers arrive overnight. We'll have some spotty showers tomorrow. And it is the first day of spring. All right, everyone, enjoy the sunrise there today. Thank you for watching. More news always over on OzarksFirst.com.